Hello everyone and in this video we're going to be looking at determining the standard enthalpy change for the reaction given in the box there. And we're given um, three key equations that we can work with and um, essentially what Hess's law states is that um, this delta H, the, the enthalpy, is what's known as a state function, meaning that we can take any path, we can combine any of these pathways here with these chemical reactions and as long as we have the same reactants and the same products, we will essentially have the same enthalpy. It doesn't matter which route we take, we'll end up with the same enthalpy, uh, enthalpy for this reaction as we would when we combine those and get the same products and reactants. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, we're going to have a go at solving this one now. And uh, in order to do this, we need to have a look at what the left-hand side is. And we can see here that we have two lots of this uh, C, which is the uh, carbon, or or graphite in uh, solid form and what we can do with that is well we can see that there's an equation on the left hand side here with C and there's no other C in the other equations so our very first thing we must have in order to actually make this equation out of that which is what we're ultimately doing with Hess's law we're combining these to get that equation is we must take two lots of this delta H1 um, in order to find our overall delta H. So delta H of reaction is the delta H of this reaction in the box. This is the one that we care about. And it's going to be, first one is two lots of H1 of uh, this here. And the reason for that is, well, obviously we need two lots of C. So we're going to have to multiply this reaction through by two. What I like to do is I like to keep trap of, uh, track of my chemical species on both sides. So down here where I've got a little bit more room, I'm going to uh, essentially multiply through this equation by two. So we've got 2CS, and then we've got to plus, and it was 2H, uh, sorry, it was just H2O here, so we've got 2H2O, and it's in gaseous form. And then if we look at um, back at the equation, we're obviously going to double that as well. In fact, everything in this first equation is going to be doubled, which is nice and easy to do. Um... So now what we need to do is we need to work out, well, um, obviously we're going to need to have some H2O in there. We can see we've already got some H2O in there as such. So we can skip that one. We can look at this right-hand side here. And we need to have some CH4 on the right-hand side. Well, this equation here is CH4, and it's the only one that does it. But it has it on the left-hand side. And this is where it's very important. This is where we're using another really cool rule of um, looking at enthalpies and state functions. If we reverse the reactions, we turn that arrow the other way around, we simply need to reverse the sign of the delta H. So obviously we're going to have one mole of CH4 on um, the right-hand side of our finalized equation. So we're going to have to obviously flip that arrow, and we don't need to multiply this delta H by anything, because we want one mole, and we've already got one mole with this equation here. So now what we do is we add the reactants. These are our reactants now, because remember we're reversing the equation, so we put them on our left-hand side. So we add them in. Um, in fact, actually, sorry, whoops, it's just H2, not 3H2. Oh, no, it is 3H2. My bad, sorry about that. Um, plus CO. So we're just keeping track of our reactants on this side, and we're going to have to cancel some stuff out when we get to our final equation. And uh, then, obviously, those just remain the same, because we don't need to uh, multiply them by anything. And now we've got our methane, our CH4, on um, the right-hand side here in the products. So now we need to make sure that we've got CO2 in there. CO2 gas is the very last thing that we need. So in order to um, get that in there, we need to look for the equation which has CO2. And uh, clearly, okay, in fact, I'll probably write this in before, but we just subtracted because we inverse the sign of H3 um, formation before um, when we did that, just so I'm keeping track of what I'm doing. But again, it's just a matter of really logically looking through the species like I have been doing and working out, do I need to multiply by a mole ratio? Do I need to um, inverse the sign in order to get from one equation to the next? So this one, we, we've seen that this is the only equation that has CO2 in it. So what we must do is, well, obviously it's going to be in the product side over here. So we need to simply just add on H2 formation. Delta H2 formation, sorry. And um, that's purely because we want the CO2, and we only need a mole of it on our right-hand side. So when we do that, we uh, add on the remaining few products here. COG 
plus H2O G um, plus CO2 G plus H2 G. Okay, so now we want to make sure that we can actually get to this original equation here, this one right up the top. And uh, in order to do that, we essentially need to cancel things out from both sides. So let's see what can we cancel. Well, we have a H2O gas here, and we've got a H2O gas there, so obviously we can cancel them out right away. Really easy. Um, and this is just to double check, essentially, um, that we have got the right things in the right places. Um, once we've done this and we've verified that we do get that formula by doing this um, operation to these three equations, we can then use those values to calculate what the delta h of this equation is, which I think is pretty cool because you're given three different equations and you can work out the delta h for a new equation. That's why Hess's law is so useful. But um, let's just double check that we've done it correctly. So what we also need to consider is we also need to see, uh, consider our CO gas here. So we've got the CO gas there, and that came from uh, equation three, when we were working with equation three, where we reverse the sign, we've got another CO gas there. So we've got two CO gas, but we also see two CO gas there. So we can essentially cancel them out, and we're starting to make our equation look pretty neat here. We're getting close to seeing if it fits this form here. So now what we need to do is we need to consider the H2s. So we've got three H2s there, we've got two H2s there, but we've also got another H2 down there. So we've got three H2s, three H2s, they're going to cancel out because there's no change to them. That's why we can cancel them, because there's no change. And voila, look what we get. We get two CS, uh, two C, sorry, in solid state, plus two H2O gas, going to CH4 gas plus CO2 gas. And that looks awfully familiar, because as you can see up here, we have got the original equation. So hence, this is our delta H for that reaction, because when we add those reactions together, when we perform this equation here, we um, obviously get the original equation. So delta H values must be the same. Because remember, enthalpy, state function, is path um, independent. It doesn't matter which path you take to get there, the delta H will be the same. So now what we need to do is we need to plug these values into our equation. So we've got positive, negative, and positive here. So we start with 2 delta H1. So that's 2 lots of 131.3. And so what we do is we subtract H3, so we need to change the sign. So it's going to be 206.1. And again, we're changing the sign, and I've probably said it a few times in the video, but it's really important that you get the signs right here, otherwise your delta H value is going to be way off. But whenever we reverse the reaction, which we did because we wanted our CH4 to be on the product side of our new equation rather than the reactant side, we have to change the sign when we do that. And lastly, we add on um, delta H2. So we add on... And this is where it gets a little bit interesting, but we add on a negative number. So obviously positive and a negative make a negative. So be careful when you have to put that in your calculator. So now we can calculate the delta H of reaction. Uh, I've got my little calculator here. So uh, essentially, uh, you can see I've already been doing some other more complicated Hess's law stuff, which I might do in a future video. But we get uh, two lots of 131.3. Just all positive there. Then we take 206.1. And then we take, because remember plus and minus just make minus, take a 41.2. And we get 15.3 kilojoules per mole as being our delta H of reaction. So 15.3 kilojoules per mole. And that is uh, positive. So that means that the reaction is endothermic. If delta H is positive, the reaction is endothermic. It takes in energy from the environment. Uh, if it's exothermic, it releases energy into the surroundings. And uh, But in this case, it's endothermic, so it takes in energy um, in this reaction. So hopefully this helped. Hess's law is a very cool um, sort of thing. I guess summarizing it very quickly here, I don't want to go on forever, but uh, essentially when you're given a problem like this, have a look, go left to right, start off with the first pieces, think, mm, where can I locate it? Do I need to multiply an equation by some number? Um, then think along the lines of, okay, what's the next one? How do I get the next one in? Uh, in our case, the H2O actually came out the first equation, so that's pretty cool, um, but that doesn't always happen. Then just keep going through the chemical species, keeping track of your steps as you go along, if you multiply it or if you switch the um, sign. 
and then yeah you sort of get the answer um so hopefully this video has been helpful leave any comments below if you uh have any questions or anything but that is essentially a very good hess's law problem and i hope it made sense